Okay, so. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. We're in Nuremberg. Nuremberg, Germany. At the Palace of Justice where the World War II criminals were, where the Nazi war criminals were tried after World War II. In fact, they still have, uh, they still have some flags out front. Uh, it's a little hard to find, actually. There's a, there's a bunch of entrances in one of the buildings under Reefer, but we've been really looking forward to this. We're gonna go inside. They actually still use this as an active courtroom, so if court's in session, you can't tour the museum, uh, but we're hoping we can today. It's not usually in session on a Thursday. Today is Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, back in the U.S. Happy Thanksgiving to all of our friends back there. Uh, Thanksgiving isn't much of a thing here in uh, in Germany, so uh, let's go see if we can check out the courtroom. Yeah, guys. So we're about to walk into courtroom 600, which was where the uh, which was where the uh, the trials were held here. Robert Jackson would have given the uh, the opening and closing arguments for the trial. This is really crazy to be here. Unbelievable. I mean, it looks like the trial is just closed yesterday. You know, everything is just, just beautifully and pristinely preserved. It's amazing. Just take a look around. You know, you see the pictures on... Uh, on Wikipedia and you see the movies and even Judgment at Nuremberg, which I haven't personally seen. And this, you know, this is a big room granted, but for the, for the trial of the century or what was the trial of the century, it's not real big. Yeah, guys, so on the upstairs of the exhibit, they actually have a, uh, they actually have some windows where you can overlook the courtroom. So you can kind of get a view down on, on what would have happened back in 1945 and 1946 during the trial. Very, uh, very cool, but very somber. So they, uh, they actually have a model of what the courtroom looked like back in 45 and 46, and that's what this is here. So they have the, uh, what would have been the judge's table and the, uh, and the, uh, and the, the defendant's dock and, and uh, all the various uh, court assistants and whatnot. And then they had, uh, back here, they had, uh, uh, you know, observation auditoriums, both upper and lower level for uh, press corps and, and whatnot. So uh, that's what it would have looked like during the trial. Yeah, guys, so upstairs in the, uh, in the Nuremberg Museum, they have a, uh, they have kind of like a, a, a museum exhibition where you can go through and read about all the uh, all the things that happen, and they give you a uh, they give you a Fox headset so you can listen to uh, listen to all the commentary. But over here, which I'm gonna maybe take a shot at giving you here, and this is where this is where uh, they have kind of a lineup. You have Herman Goering, Carl Donitz, Rudolf Hess, and. Uh, Apparently Hermann Goering was beside himself that he had to sit with commoners, and uh, here they have, uh, and here they have the disposition of all of the, uh, all of the, uh, all of the Nazis that were on trial here. I'll give you a shot of it, but you can look it up on Wikipedia. This is pretty neat, and here's the other half of the defendant's docket here, and uh, they've got a nifty film here in the corner and this might have been this might have been the actual defendant's docket maybe one of them which is pretty cool hmm. so 
so this is this is a video of Robert Jackson uh, on the 21st of November 1945 um, probably giving the opening statement for the trial crazy yeah guys in here they have the uh, the press corps so we have Walter Cronkite and Marguerite Higgins and uh, don't know how to pronounce his name. Hugh Javon, perhaps? Um, John Steinbeck. Rebecca West. John DePasso. Eric Kastner. Eric Command. And Elijah Ehrenberg. The prominent press corps that covered the Nuremberg trials back in 45 and 46. And here's the press corps auditorium that I was just telling you about on the, uh, on the model there. Mm -hmm.